gut, im Sinne sind drei. Welcome to a new episode of Plots We Have at Home, where we come up with the most unhinged story prompts this side of the Atlantic and let ChatGPT do the hard work and make sense of it. Or not. We read the stories out loud and it's always the first time for both of us hearing them, so you get our unfitted reactions. I'm Danny. And I'm John. And let's dive right into our first story of today. And today's topic is a special because this poor guy was stuck in Siegen for many, many weeks because of the Deutsche Bahn. So this one is for you, Deutsche Bahn. Close to my heart. Let's go. And here comes story number one. Poirot solves the ICE murder. Kind of a spoiler, but okay. <laughs> the sleek ICE train sped through a snowy landscape of the Sauerland region, connecting Essen to Frankfurt with its usual efficiency. <coughs> <laughs> Efficiency is a very interesting choice of word here. <laughs> However, on this chilly winter day, an unexpected hindrance awaited the passengers aboard. As the train made its way through the picturesque countryside, <coughs> a light snowfall covered the tracks, and a small herd of cows, apparently indifferent to the oncoming train, stood in its path. <laughs> <laughs> I already love where this is going so much. The train came to a sudden halt, leaving the passengers puzzled and slightly annoyed. Inside one of, <laughs> inside one of the compartments, Dr. Ian Malcolm, renowned chaos theorist from Jurassic Park, engaged in a conversation with Tony Stark, the billionaire genius from Marvel, Brent Smith, the lead singer of Shinedown, Nick Wilde, the sly fox from Zootopia, and the young duo Bibi and Tina. <laughs> Didn't see that coming. They were an eclectic group of people, brought together by the randomness of travel. Just Deutsche Bahn things, I guess. It's very much on point. As the passengers grumbled about the delay, a discovery sent shockwaves through the <laughs> compartment. Dr. Ian Malcolm, who had been animated, animatedly discussing chaos theory, now lay lifelessly in his seat. Okay. <laughs> We have a first one here. ChatGPT just did a typo, I guess. What it went meant to say is, Dr. Ian Malcolm, who had been animatedly discussing chaos theory, now lies lifelessly in his seat. The passengers stared in disbelief and whispered. Whispers of shock and confusion rippled through the compartment. The atmosphere turned tense as the realization set in. Someone among them was a murderer. Because he, he just fucking lay lifeless in his seat all of a sudden. And the first idea is murder and not heart attack. I'm very confused. Somebody saw something, I'm telling that, you. That's some incident partner shit right here. <laughs> Jumping to conclusions, luck. Like. Okay. That was for the edit. Just when panic threatened to take over, a familiar face emerged from the crowd. The world-famous detective Hercule Poirot. With his meticulous mustache and sharp eyes, Poirot took control of the situations. Ladies and gentlemen, he announced in his distinct Belgian accent, we find ourselves in a most peculiar situation. A murder has taken place and it is my duty to unravel the truth. Oh, peak accent. Loving it. That's, that's my shit right there. Poirot began his investigation, questioning each passenger in the compartment individually. Tony Stark, with his wit and charisma, tried to downplay the severity of the situation. That's suspicious as fuck. Bren Smith, the rockstar, seemed genuinely shocked by the news. Nick Wilde, the sly fox, maintained a cool exterior because he's a fox. <laughs> and Bibi and Tina, the young duo, were visibly frightened. They've been through worse. I'm telling you, they like soft murders themselves. It's like they got kidnapped and shit. Hannah Montana, who had been in the adjoining compartment, offered little insight into the situation. Poirot gathered the, gathered the suspects in the dining car, where he meticulously laid out the facts. Bold to assume that they could get a spot to sit in the dining car. That's the only spot where you get to, see, to sit if you order the coffee and then sit there for three hours sipping it. <laughs> the murderer is among us, mes amis, Poirot declared. I have observed, questioned, and considered the evidence. Each of you have the opportunity, but only one had the motive. Is that so? 
The tension in the air thickened as Sproul, <laughs> as Sproul revealed his deductions. Brent Smith, though, though shocked, was a fan of Dr. Malcolm's work and had no motive. Okay, Nick Wilde's cunning nature does not extend to murder, and the young girls, Bibi and Tina, lack the malice required. Oh, you underestimate these girls! You sure, my man? <laughs> Poirot paused. His gaze locked onto Tony Stark and Hannah Montana. <laughs> it leaves us with two possible subjects. Suspect. Tony Stark. Two possible suspects. I mean, of course. Tony Stark and Anna Montana. <laughs> However, Mr. Stark's alibi is solid. Miss Montana, on the other hand, displayed a subtle nervousness during the interrogations. The passengers exchanged glances, unsure of what to believe. Okay, I thought it was pretty clear what he was trying to say there. I mean, he's also just not <laughs> basing this on actual evidence. Just starting pointing every way, which way direction. The motive, mes amis, is not one of personal hatred, but a crime of opportunity. Miss Montana, a famous persona, sought to protect her secret <laughs> identity. <laughs> oh, now he's gonna fucking reveal to the world. <laughs> Dr. Malcolm, with his knowledge of chaos theory, unwittingly posed a threat to her carefully crafted facade. Is that so? Hannah Montana's eyes widened as Poirot revealed the truth. It was you, Miss Montana, who silenced Dr. Malcolm. The chaos he could unleash by discovering your secret was more than you were willing to bear. As the realization dawned, Hannah Montana, unable to remain... Maintain. <laughs> As the realization dawned, Hannah Montana, unable to maintain her composure, confessed to the crime. Poirot, with a satisfied nod, turned to the other passengers. The case is closed, mes amis. Order will be restored and justice served. Because we're in the dining cart, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the passengers, still trapped in the immobilized ICE train, <laughs> watched as Poirot, with a final flourish of his mustache, exited the dining okay. car. <laughs> the snowy landscape outside reflected the cold reality of the murder mystery. But at least, with Poirot's intervention, the wheels of justice had turned once more. Although not the wheels of the ICE. <laughs> Wowee, I might say. It's a beautiful, beautiful murder on the Sauerland Express that we just got here. <laughs> wow. Uh, I don't even know where to start. I, I, mean, I gotta jump to the, to the ending real quick yeah, because please, I find please. it so funny that he's, he just fucking exits <laughs> the fucking dining cart and is like, justice is served. No! <laughs> Just like yeah, he, he literally cannot like he's not a police officer or whatever. So she's not. Even if he was, it's not like he took into her into custody yeah. or something. It was she, just like yeah, this person is a murderer. Have fun standing in the same car as her while we're not able to move. I mean, Bye. on the other hand, where is she supposed to go? <laughs> in the no, I mean, she could be not even that, but more like oh no, I'm found out. I might do something irrational now. As the I already killed a man, might yeah. kill all these others too. Exactly. Now yeah. all of them know my secret. Hmm. <laughs> That seems kind of counterproductive, but I guess he was easy. That's he's why he left. <laughs> Poirot is more there to solve the puzzle than to actually serve any justice anyway. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that was stuff. just my, my one thing that I really wanted to mention. But now, no, over I, to you. <laughs> Impressions, thoughts. I mean... Emotions. <laughs> emotions, there are plenty of those. I definitely lo love the like cast of of suspects i actually not sure did you like tell it to kill dr malcolm or was it on on random who gets killed again no i uh, decided mm. who would be dead okay ah that's too sad because i really would have enjoyed dr malcolm talking to hercule poirot trying to wiggle himself out of everything with like yeah no, life uh, finds a way i mean or that wouldn't that, in this case that wouldn't yeah. have happened because <laughs> Yes, death finds a way. I love that. Uh, that wouldn't have happened, obviously, because the only person who gets dialogue lines is Hercule Poirot. That's true. He only talks at us. I, yeah. I, that's a, that's a bummer. I said I wanted to have more dialogue, like always, but yeah. it doesn't always work that way. I guess. Yeah, um, sometimes it's it's a little uh, hasty. I, yeah, I that's why I meant with it was a little short for the prompt I gave it. 
Mm. It was surprisingly coherent. That for sure. I mean, it, it definitely uh, for most of the suspects, I might say, he had a decent um, understanding of what what they're made of and like gave them motive and or not depending. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, he definitely underestimates Bibi and Tina who have been no. in like all of the shit Seriously. imaginable. Um, like... If they haven't killed, like, an undead Lich King, then that's about the only thing they haven't done yet. Yeah, true. Mm. No, I mean, I I, I love a little murder mystery on a train, for sure. I was a little sad that the cows that got mentioned in the first (laughs) paragraph didn't come back because I expected you to either put them in front of the train or make one of them give birth on the tracks (laughs) to delay the train. Oh no, but I I just thought it it was this classic uh, Kühe im Gleis situation where, you know, the train has to stop because they're just standing there, no one is getting them and they're just standing there. Also, these are actual reasons ICE trains or other trains have stopped yeah, the, the cow giving birth on the track has actually happened to me before. I thought it would be sprinkled in as like an inside joke. Yeah, I, I stood I, at the station for like three hours and they just <laughs> couldn't move the fucking cow. <laughs> at this point, I have to admit that I cannot remember all the reasons that you it were meant, stuck on trains <laughs> or <plenty>. stations. <laughs> I just thought I'd mention light slope snowfall mm-hmm. and cows. Yes, <laughs> that's all you need, really. One of the two is plenty already. The light snowfall <laughs> alone would have been enough. I guess, but I wanted to have something that, you know, people that don't live in Germany might find a ridiculous reason for a developed Western country to, you know, stop a train, but not for the Deutsche Bahn. The Deutsche Bahn does not differentiate, you know, it doesn't judge reasons to stop the train. It just stops the train. Period. Um, Yeah. But I also love that at the end... (laughs) The train still doesn't fucking move. Yes. That's, that's actually the perfect ending. I was curious if you told it to. No. <laughs> okay, that's that's just perfect. Because the actual Orient Express, I obviously based this on the uh, Agatha Christie's Orient Express. Mm-hmm. Um, it, the actual Orient Express does run in the end. Like it leaves yeah, exactly. the... It, it, it fell off the tracks or something in the... Like, yeah, it got, it got uh, like sabotaged, I think. No, right? I no. think it was like or a... Was it just like a... What's it called? When the snow comes from the mountains. Avalanche? Yeah. That's what the, what stops the train. It also would be funny. Avalanche in the Sauerland, but yeah. Um, but I thought that would be such a logical reason to actually yeah, stop a train. That's true. No, no. <clears throat> I, I mean, I really, really, really love that at the end, he just like tells, yep, it was fucking Hannah Montana, <laughs> apparently, who also wasn't in the cart in the first place. She just like swung in, killed Ian Malcolm and swung back to the next cart also how yeah i don't know maybe also why did she even show up then that was stupid as fuck no i think he went to the next cart and got her over oh that's what he did at least what i what i got from the the story i don't know um but yeah maybe she went through the vents (laughs) that's all i can come up with must have been some sort of distraction because they're know. all sitting together and then that is also something where I yeah, figured I that it, that would be a little weird. I also would have thought that ChatGPT would do it differently because I said that these people are all like on the same part of the train. And then at some point they realize or find that Ian Malcolm is dead. But it was just really weird because it, it, it seemed like they were sitting together and all of a sudden, like he was talking with them and all of a sudden he was just like, dead. Drop. So everyone would just suspect that his heart gave in or something. Maybe that was the, the whole game of Hannah Montana, that she saw him in the dining room and the, she slipped in poison. I mean, yeah. Or something. In my in my head, it was like, lights go off, lights go on, Malcolm's dead, but that is not specifically stated. Not at so, all, actually. Yeah. And I, I was a little like, I was hoping that... I mean, ChatGPT did give the people or the suspects decent reasons or motives no motives that makes made sense for the characters mm-hmm. i just ho- was hoping it would be more in a agatha christie kind of way that they have like secret motives behind exactly. it and actually i was hoping that everyone would have a motive because and only one had the opportunity yeah because it wouldn't be like it would be too easy for Hercule Poirot, but i guess he was just very bored on the ice from essen to frankfurt yeah. 
which I'm also not sure why. But I mean, I guess you I can go to Belgium have... from Frankfurt. I don't know, man. He's, he's usually all his other cases are in like fucking Egypt or yeah. Venice or so he's, he's just he's somewhere. Just a, he's just a tourist. Yeah, he just likes to visit places. I guess. No. So yeah. I mean, the Poirot was on point for oh, sure. Oh, yeah, no, so that was 100%. Perfect. That was great. <laughs> um, yeah, as I said, perfect ending. Just letting them bask in the fucking train for like another three hours probably before it slowly moves and or turns back. Probably later, <laughs> let's face it. And just make them sit there contemplating. I think they would be the ending up in Hagen. Also, <laughs> this whole time, there's just the dead body of Ian Malcolm <laughs> sitting in the fucking seat. Nobody coming and getting it. I guess if it's lightly snowing outside, maybe they could like put him on the top of the train so he doesn't start smelling. I don't know. I don't know how long the IC. I think for like a couple of hours, you're, it's not that bad actually. Maybe that's, that's why they needed to go to the to the dining car so because, that they can sorry. put Ian Malcolm in the fridge or something. I don't know. But yeah, that was also something I was cons <laughs> considering with the end. I was like, huh, okay. So they're just going to sit next to the dead body for another hour or four <laughs> oh, yeah. and that's contemplate also, what that's, happened. That's, that's Deutsche Bahn roulette. You don't know how long you're going to sit in that train. You also don't know who's going to sit next to you. And you're not, you don't know where you're going to end up. Exactly. No, I no, guess Altenhundum, probably. <laughs> always, always Altenhundum. Old dogum. <laughs> Beautiful city. <laughs> city <laughs> no I, I i really enjoyed it i would give it like a solid 8 8.5 i think even though it has been shortened but it's like a nice digestible bite of infuriating deutsche bahn lore yes that will live rent free in my head from now on. also kind of feel, feels like this could actually happen on an ice definitely it has probably already yeah so probably never know all righty beautiful let's, let's move on move to on our second because story because we do move on Okay, here's our second Deutsche Bahn story of today. And the title is already, it got me hooked. Iron Rails and Divine Trials. <laughs> I have no fucking idea where this is going and I'm already loving it. Oh, wow. <laughs> I just love when you scan the text and you read like one name and you're already dead. The sun hung low over the German landscape as the clock struck noon on a fateful Wednesday. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's Wednesday, my dudes. Laszlo Cravensworth, Blade and Nepomuk, known as the Rail Reckoners, <laughs> gathered at Munich's bus link train station, eyes fixed on the distant tracks. On the opposite platform stood their rivals, Pinocchio. <laughs> Gabriel van Helsing and Simon the Devious. <laughs> the most devious bastard in New, New York, York City. City. Collectively known as the Midnight Mavericks. <laughs> as those sound like basketball teams. True. I don't know where this is going. Maybe they're playing basketball now. <laughs> the atmosphere crackled with tension as the game master, none other than Jesus Christ himself, that, does that even work with the vampires? They can't know. even say his name. Do you think they can look at him? I think looking at him should be fine. I mean, they can, like, look at holy water. They just can't touch it. But they can't look at, like, a cross. I guess. We'll see. I don't know. Maybe they wear sunglasses. <laughs> Peak Laszlo. <laughs> The atmosphere crackled with tension as the game master, none other than Jesus Christ himself, appeared in a blinding burst of light. His divine voice echoed through the station. Welcome, mortals, to the Iron Rails Challenge. Embark on the Deutsche Bahn for any deviation and your journey shall end instantly. <laughs> with a wave of his hand, the trains were set in motion and the epic race across the German heartland began. The regal reckoners sprinted towards their assigned train. Laszlo barking orders. Blade, check the schedules. Nepomuk, scout the competition. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Midnight Mavericks exchanged glances, Pinocchio's nose twitching with excitement. Mm. <clears throat> wow. Gabriel van Helsing growled, We won't let them beat us to Berlin. Simon, keep an eye, on, keep an eye out for tricks. 
As the trains rumbled forward, the rail reckoners boarded, only to find their chosen locomotive delayed due to technical issues. <laughs> Laszlo cursed. This is a conspiracy! <laughs> On the opposing train, the Midnight Mavericks faced a similar setback. Pinocchio, ever the optimist, quipped, Well, this is just fantastic. Delayed by divine intervention, I suppose. <laughs> that is the next reason you're going to hear when you <laughs> touch a train. <laughs> <It's not God. laughs> ding, ding. Information on IC 2223 to Frankfurt. Delayed by 60 minutes by divine intervention. Zug fällt heute aus. <laughs> <clears throat> As both teams jockeyed for position, Blade glared at the Mavericks. You think you can outsmart us? We're the kings of the rails! <laughs> okay. Gabriel Van Helsing grinned. We faced monsters scarier than you, Blade. This is just a pit stop for us. The trains roared forward, <laughs> only to come to an abrupt halt between stations. <laughs> Jesus Christ's voice echoed again. Challenges, ava oh, challenges await you, my children. Embrace the chaos of the iron rails. Laszlo smirked. Bring it on, divine challenge or not! We'll reach Berlin first! The Ray Reckoners and the Midnight Mavericks faced delays, cancellations, and unexpected detours. Pinocchio, ever the puppet with a plan, yes. suggested, <laughs> maybe we can use Simon's devious skills to our advantage. Simon chuckled. I like where your wooden head is at. Let's play dirty. Mm, okay. <laughs> the race intensified with each passing station. The catchphrases of the characters resounding through the train cars like battle cries. I knew it would do it at some point. Blade's confident drawl echoed, I am the day walker and this train is my hunting ground. <laughs> Gave Roman Helsing retorted, I face Dracula himself, Blade. Your threats mean nothing. Zu Ende! Zu Ende! Dein Spiel ist aus! Oh, oh we're not gonna sing the full song, don't worry. Can we tag it in the show notes, though? I guess. I hope we can. We sing the whole thing, we get like uh, YMCA 8 anyways. <laughs> but we don't want that. As Berlin neared, the trains raced side by side. Both teams refusing to yield. The finish line loomed and Jesus Christ watched with a divine grin. How does one grin divinely? I have no clue. In a final burst of speed, the Ray Reckoners surged ahead, reaching Berlin's Grand Station just moments before the Midnight Mavericks. Laszlo Cravensworth raised his fist triumphantly. We're the kings of the iron rails! <laughs> Jesus Christ appeared, smiling. Well done, my children. You've proven your mettle. Until we meet again on the tracks of destiny. And so the Iron Rails challenge concluded, leaving the echoes of the epic race to reverberate through the German landscape, forever etched in the annals of divine competitions. I think I have to have wrap my head around this first. I was so yeah. confused in the beginning because I had no fucking clue what all of this was about. <laughs> That's about what I was going for. If you if you need a moment, I can maybe explain what my thought process yeah, was. Yeah, just explain your, your idea here. I mean, I, I got it by now, but like explain to us what you I, wanted I, to happen. I basically wanted to have this two like parties, teams of similar like uh, make uppens to race in a like Mad Max style death race from Munich to Berlin. Yes. In on just trains. All German trains, all Deutsche Bahn. And just get fucked over by all the delays, all, all the cancellations and all the fun <laughs> stuff that happens to me plenty of times Today, throughout the week. There's no stop in Berlin. <laughs> Ding. That, that would have been something too. <laughs> Yeah, I I didn't give it too much direction for yeah, the end. Yeah, yeah, so. I, I, I thought so. And yeah, just uh, basically make it like this death race uh, over the tracks that gets completely derailed, no pun intended, uh, by Deutsche Bahn being Deutsche Bahn. And, and, yeah, and just, Je Jesus being the divine game master. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought about it and I implemented him like as one of the last... Uh, components to this beautiful work of art because I felt like at some point some of them would have just been like 
Fledermaus and like try to cheat the cheat the whole game by not taking the trains and I wanted him to basically be like no if you like don't take the trains I will smite you on the spot kind okay, of stuff okay, so okay okay that makes a lot of sense yes um yeah it was actually <laughs> it was I thought it was funny I love the combination of characters I, it felt like it was a very clear vampire versus vampire hunter kind of situation. And then there were Pinocchio and Nepomuk, which was a little bit throwing me off, I guess. But I mean, that's okay. I, I got Nepomuk because of the train situation. Because he's riding oh, around with yeah, yeah, yeah. Jim Knopf and Jim Knopf. Lucas. Ooh. Okay, there's too yeah. many train situations going on with a lot of characters here. Because yeah. then, then what I thought so, was the, the fucking train scene where, where to end it actually takes place. It's on a train. Also <laughs> part of my inspiration why I took Gabriel Van Helsing into it. I fucking love that. The Dracula musical, people. If you don't know it yet, check it out. What Just are do. you doing? Check out the German version. It's so much better. <laughs> So yeah, yeah. Basically, okay. gave each team like I mean, a vampire, I saw, like, yeah. a vampire so hunter. Obviously, Laszlo and Simon being rivals. Would have been funny to include the hat. <laughs> Whoever I, had the hat at that moment, the train would be just, you know, oh, breaking yeah. down. I'm, fucking. I'm very sad that I didn't include it now. It's yeah. fine. Um, and then the vampire hunter situation, and then the yeah, sidekick kind of situation. I yeah. guess apparently Pinocchio is the strategy genius or something. I don't know. But his strategy only includes, hey, let's make <laughs> let's make Simon make a plan. <laughs> well, nobody said that he was really that great at it. I mean, that's also not canon, I guess. You never know. Um oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, no, no, I actually <laughs> loved it. I it was a little I would have loved a little more detail about the Deutsche Bahn mishaps or like the yeah. situations that were going on. And yeah. I think that is a problem for ChatGPT because it takes the information from websites and everything. So it would not get all the memes. Yeah, that's true. I, I should have been more specific about the the nature of the delays and the cancellations and the stops and all that. Yeah, so. but other than that, I really loved it. Why, why Munich to Berlin, though? Mm. You could have included Stuttgart. Fucking oh, Stuttgart no, no. 21. <laughs> See, my whole thing was, and I maybe should have just used Edmund Stoiber as the, the game master instead of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Weil der Transrapid fährt in 10 Minuten von München nach Berlin. Okay, okay. That was my whole inspiration okay, for this track. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's totally fair, like any any train situation in Germany no matter where no matter what would have worked in a way but like yeah yeah I would no, love that they're like out in bright daylight so it poses I mean I guess it's Guillermo sweat sunscreen situation I guess I mean that's canon now <laughs> yes 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 <laughs> I guess it never said like what time of day they left it did did it in the beginning I'm not quite uh, blah, sure. blah, the sun blah, blah, hung blah. low Okay. Hung low over the German landscape as the clock struck noon. That's also an interesting sentence just to put out there. Yes, I guess. it's actually very fair. <laughs> On a fateful Wednesday. <laughs> um, no, I, I liked it. I did get a lot of dialogue, which was fun because the characters had like their um, banter and everything. Yeah, I love that. Um, but it lacked a little plot. Or story. Yeah, it was like it was a good skeleton that that lacked some flesh on it. Yeah, I yeah, think. exactly. Like, yeah. Because other it's, than that, I, I that's why I was so confused in the beginning, as I didn't really know what they were about to do, and then they had all these like weird divine names, kind of team names, whatever. It was all a little, a lot of words. Um, yeah, very little meaning. Jumping in the deep end, I guess. Um, yeah. But other than that, I think if I don't know, you were to try that again with that prompt and then i don't know fill in some details maybe it yeah. could be like a really fun story exactly. because the char character combination is amazing yeah that's that's like on the top of my list for for rewrites right now just giving it like the little bit extra spice of of the detail for other things happening i think would really bring this together as one of the the best stories we had yet 
I might. Yeah, no, definitely. It, it would be it would be it would be so fun if we got like a little more detail. But that yeah. also is just sheer luck sometimes. Yeah. ChatGPT is totally like giving you this much story and sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, and ChatGPT just does chat gpt stuff when i say yeah use the character's catchphrases and it just says and they shout their catchphrases throughout the train as battle cry <laughs> as battle cries. which also made me think about them just using like regular trains so there's just like 180 people trying to get home from work sitting there while there's like <laughs> vampires shouting and like at the other train and four nobody tracks and over. nobody fucking cares and everybody's just like oh Everyone's just like, well, yeah, that's Shut just fuck a up. fucking normal. Putting in the earphones. Fucking normal Wednesday. Don't, don't even hear it because of noise canceling headphones. <laughs> it's just like, oh, also like, um, what do you call it? Someone who checked the tickets or the, something. Yeah, the controller. Yeah, that would have been fun. Yeah, that would have also been great. Like, that would be great for a rewrite to include just someone Laszlo like that. Trying, Laszlo trying, trying to, <laughs> to um, hypnotize, hypnotize and he's not good at hypnotizing. Yes. We learned that. <laughs> And I also think that I specifically would need to tell ChatGPT that it is allowed to swear because I really hope that Laszlo would at some point use some variation of his. I don't know fuck if ChatGPT. I don't know if ChatGPT can category. do that. I, don't know, I, I mean, it, it can do that to a, to a certain degree. It would never use fuck. It would use BS as mm. abbreviation. Okay. Yeah. We'll, but it could we'll, use words like bloody or something. Yeah. Maybe maybe we'll experiment with that we'll see at some point <laughs> we'll make it a whole prompt <laughs> beautiful stuff all right i would rate it um i would rate it seven out of ten mm, because it was nice. lacking some detail but the the idea overall is very great and i know that you suffer a lot from deutsche bahn trauma so i i see what you're doing it's really really nice just letting it all out and putting it out in the open yeah. this is basically what all of my train rides are to a t just with Less Berlin and Munich and more Altenhundem and Siegen, yeah. <laughs> I guess. That was it. Our two stories for today. Thank you so much for listening. And if you are stuck on a Deutsche Bahn train at this moment and you just finished this story, you're gonna need some more, but we got you because we still have more plot at home.